Mississippi State University chasing the way. And uh, I have given you an evaluation form, and I appreciate if you would fill that out after the workshop is over. I will collect it at the end of the workshop and sit back and enjoy and pray. Well, thank you very much. Um, some of you know me. Some of you don't. You're the lucky ones. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a unique session today. We've got a smaller crowd than normal. And so normally we would just try to stick to the agenda. And we can do that. Or if you have specific things you'd like to talk about and ask questions about, I'd be glad to do it that way. The session has evolved Initially, I was just going to show some, some tools that you could use to help productivity and security and, and different things. And then I was asked by another group, hey, can you come do a presentation on some, some apps that you can use with the iPad? Well, being the American that I am, I said, yeah. But we're going to do some stuff for the Android, too. We're going to try to find something that goes cross-platform so that you, know, you don't have to keep using new tools for different people. And so I said, okay, we'll, we'll tie this in with things that we can do online and stuff for the Android and stuff for the, for the Apple, the iPad. I was rocking until 12.30 this morning. And it hits me. How are you going to show this? How do you show the, the screen on the iPad with these tools? Well, you can actually get the, get the output from the iPad and plug it in. But then I'd be unplugging and plugging in all day long. And Brandon had the situation in the last session, if you were in here for this, where he had to keep, because with, with the tablets, you can have one screen open. You had to keep opening and closing and going back. And So at 12.30 this morning, I made a run to everybody's favorite bastion of freedom, Walmart. And I got a webcam. So what we're going to do is when we talk about some of these things, you're going to see me disappear behind the podium, and you're going to see a funny looking webcam pop up, and that's how we're going to look at the screen today. Now, if you do have an iPad or an iPhone or an Android device and you want to follow along, please do. And at any point in time, if you've got questions about something, we can, we can get off subject because uh, it doesn't bother me a bit. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first tool I want to talk about is a product called Lookout. This is a, uh, an application that will allow you with an Android or an Apple device to install it on your machine. The primary function of this is to check all of your apps as you download them or whatever's on your device to make sure it has no viruses on it. They're starting to show up on tablets. I mean, it's just a matter of time. And pretty soon, if you're not careful, you're going to have a brand new $300 cell phone that you're going to have to throw away because it's been wiped out by something. So Lookout.com handles this. The good thing about it is you can also back up on the free version all of your phone contacts to the cloud. And since this conference is all about the cloud, that's a pretty cool thing to start with. The premium version allows you to also back up videos and other documents as well. This also gives you the ability to go in and search for a device. Let me log in. Yesterday, After my session, I was sitting down at the internet area, the, the email area, talking to a couple of people. Got ready to go. Couldn't find my tablet. It was gone. Now, some of y'all would say, hey, it was state property. It's insured. No, it wasn't. It was actually Craig's property. And so you had a problem. So I was able to come here to the missing device. And you can locate it. Or you can make it scream. Now, at the time, 
I had it narrowed down to three people who might have accidentally picked it up. And as some of you have noticed today, you had trouble hitting the internet, so I couldn't make it scream. But if I had, what this will do, and it looks like it's going to have the same problem today, it will actually make this start flashing red and blue lights. It will make it start having a siren sound. It works with the iPad as well. I'll wait for this to come on and here is the first, there we go, voila, high tech, right? When you go to the iPad, it does the same thing, you can do your missing device, it will go in, back up all of your contacts for free, signal flare, Uh, there. Why is it not wanting to do this? There we go. You can use it to locate your iPad. It will send you an email that says where it is. You can also go in with the premium version and for I think it's $3 a month you have the ability if it gets lost, misplaced, or stolen you can actually go in and lock your machine or you can wipe it completely clean. I was 36 seconds away from pushing the button to wipe this thing clean when this gentleman over here came up and said, look what I found. And what had happened is somebody had just, we were talking about stuff and they had all their stuff laid out on the table and they were just looking for something and when they got ready they just grabbed their stack of papers and didn't realize it was under it. So let this be a lesson to you. If you're quick, you can get away with one of these. And if you're unlucky, you can lose one of these real simple. It's, it's a very good program, again, because it's cross-platform. You can activate the, the search device from an iPhone, an Android phone, a tablet, or a desktop. Okay? And it doesn't take up much space at all. Well, I'm thinking about, let me go ahead and tell you this. All of the links that we're going to have, we're going to talk about today, are going to be located here on my tech blog. It's craigstechblog.wordpress.com. craigstechblog.wordpress.com. Okay? Now, I've got links from other presentations that you can go back and look at some other tools. We've got some screencasts and videos of other presentations you can go back if you're bored or if you've got like need a scarecrow or something out for your field. That's the high tech stuff there. All you have to do is come to the links and you can see some things that we've done. Here's one from Mississippi Business Educators Association and there are the different links to the different tools that you can try out. If you, Wayne, did I do that okay? Was that the good Vanna White move? Yeah, I thought so. You can also then go back up to presentations and look at the different links here that will have links and videos to different presentations. Here's one we did in February at the Mississippi Educational Computing Association. You've got PowerPoint presentations, handouts, and then you've got YouTube videos where you can watch the presentation that goes along with this. And so we've got that going. I'll turn that off because it's no fun, but just go back to the Craig's Tech blog .wordpress.com. You can also find my contact information there if you have any questions. Okay, back to the presentation. After Lookout, a lot of people are trying to find a way to have one word processing system, one note taking system that they don't have to keep changing from system to system or when they go to their laptop, to their, to their tablet, to their iPhone. Evernote is probably one of the best. Who's ever heard of Evernote? When did you hear about Evernote? 
an hour ago. Did you hear about it last weekend? I'm just going to be upfront and honest with everybody because we're big boys and girls in here. The world is a dangerous place. Everybody's always getting hacked. Netflix has been hacked, everybody else. Evernote got hacked last weekend and 50,000, I'm sorry, yeah, 50,000 user passwords were co-opted. Now Evernote jumped on it real quick and fixed it. But all of these things, you need to be aware that anybody can, can get it. Now before you trip out and say, I'm done with the internet, okay? When you go shopping like Carolyn did last night, and you use a credit card and they swipe that thing and it goes over the phone lines, guess what? That's the same lines that the internet is going over, okay? So you can get hacked just as easily like that as you can anywhere. But it's just something to be aware of that Evernote has been, has been compromised recently, but it's still a very, very good application. Uh, yes, it is free. The website right here, the good thing about this is you can download it to your desktop and use it as a word processing application. It's going to link into Dropbox. You can go in and get things as you need to. As you can see, it's got, um, see if I can get it to pop up for me here. Oops, didn't get that one. While we're waiting for that one to download, I'm using a different machine from my one at work, and so what Evernote is, I think I just got hit with the same, uh, could, not, could not connect to the network that everybody else has had today. Okay. This is the interface where you can go in and take your notes. Okay, it's not going to let me open that one. And again, you can just type. You can use the voice feature. You know what? Somebody should have said, Craig, forgot that. Now you can see, let me go back to the, this is your main interface when you come into Evernote. Places, tags, notebooks, your notes. Go into your note, tap in here type. You can also I don't know why I'm not getting that to work. There it goes. It's now recording. You can see at the top of the screen it's recording. I know this is kind of like a zoo up here right now. It's, it's crazy but it's modern technology. Once you get that done you can actually get it to translate or actually you created, this was going to create a, a message in it. Don't you love it when you don't have your audio turned up and now you've got to play it back again. Has anybody ever had one of those days when it just doesn't really look like it's going to go right? Well, this is going to be kind of one of those days too, it looks like. But as you can see, you can have all of the, the same features where you can highlight, you can bold. And I got to admit, I'm not a big Mac person. I can bold my text, underline it, italicize it, bullet mark it. When I get done with it here, 
I can actually I can close this and save it and it will be updated to the cloud and I'm able to access it from my laptop or desktop Mac or PC as it goes along. It's a good program. Again, in the previous session when they talked about using either a tablet or a laptop, your laptop you're never going to be able to do without. You're never going to be able to do without a laptop because the keyboard, the ability to have multiple screens open to drag and drop content in, where right now with your tablets you're only going to have open something, cut and paste, close it. Open something else up, cut and paste, move it back over here, do it back and forth. But if you do it online on your laptop and then put it up in the cloud to, to Evernote, you can make small changes and print things out. I use the free version. That's a good question. Do I use the, the free version, the premium version? My philosophy on that, and that's a very good question, why do you want to go out and pay for something if you don't know if you're going to use it or if you're going to need all of the features? Because a lot of times these folks are going to come in and either update their system where maybe it's no longer a premium event or they might get sold out or they just might go belly up. I've had that happen before where you get in and, and buy a premium subscription or something and all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Has anybody ever had that happen to them? No? <laughs> this lady back here, no, I've never had that happen to me. I'm like, wow, I want to know who she's dealing with because I mean, I mean, you always have something that will go from free to premium. You buy the premium edition and all of a sudden it doesn't work. It gets bought out by somebody else and, and they get rid of it. And that's just one of the things, other than, other than people like uh, Microsoft and, and Apple with their stuff, all these other programs are going to be going through some sort of change. Uh, you're going to Canvas as your LMS. You were using Blackboard. Blackboard bought out WebCT, which originally was free. And then they went to a premium version as well. Blackboard bought them out. Who knows, Canvas may get up there and buy Blackboard out. There's always somebody buying somebody else out, if not to make themselves better, then to at least get rid of the competition. So while these things are, are there, I like to use the free version most of the time because I don't, I'm not a power user. You know, how many, how many of you do PDFs? How many of you like to create documents or just print out a document as a PDF? Okay, you probably went out and bought Adobe, the Adobe PDF Writer. Well, I don't create them as much as actually view them and print them out for you, so I, I okay. can't do that. But. If you've got a, a Word document that you want to that you want to print as a PDF, you've gone out and paid for Adobe. You could have gone out and gotten Do PDF for free. It prints a PDF document. You don't have all the other fancy stuff for annotations and, and post-it notes and things like that. But if all you're doing is printing a document to a PDF, why do you want to spend all that big bucks? Okay, that's do, do PDF, by the way, is dopdf.com and it is a free PDF writer. You just simply install it as a printer when you get ready to, to print a document. You don't save as, you just hit print and you select the do PDF printer and it goes out there and, and saves as a PDF file and it's, it uh, works with every PDF reader out there. We talked about an app yesterday too that lets you not only view PDFs with the, with the iPad tablets but also <coughs> when you edit. I can't recall the name of that one to save my life. But. Okay, that's, that may be um, an Apple specific app and I'd have to go back and look at that and see which one it is. There are some out there that you can do that, but again, is it a full-blown app like, like Adobe, uh, the full-blown Adobe where you can, can cut and paste and edit the text and things like that, or is it just a few of the functions? From my understanding, yes, and, and they also mentioned that it was free. 
Okay, I'll have to check on that. I'll come up with that. It's in my notes. I'll, I'll his notes look like my receipts, just a pocket full of them. And I like that. I like that. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Um, Evernote is, like I said, it, it's very, where is the, as you can see, Evernote, you can load onto your desktop and operate it just like a word processor. You can take notes, you can make documents, uh, a little bit of everything with it. Let's see if it's gonna load up. Well, I'm, I'm gonna wait on that to load up and come back to it in just a minute. By the way, the product we're using right here to um, show the webcam with is, is Screencast-O-Matic. We talked about it in one of the sessions yesterday. This is a product you can use, it's free. You can uh, do screencasts with it. You can you can actually do webcasts with it. You can use your webcam and it will capture your audio and video and save it as an MP4 or a QuickTime or um, an AVI file that you can then upload to YouTube or Vimeo or uh, Screencast-O-Matic site itself. Okay, well that's loading up. Let's just keep moving forward here. Selly. This is an application that allows you to do text blasts to users. It is absolutely free. Uh, how many of your schools have uh, some sort of alert system. I know East Central has the Warrior Alert. Okay. How many of you don't have a system? Or how many of you would like to have one just for your class or for an organization or something? Or even for a conference like this? What you've got with Selly. It allows you with each email address to create your own text messaging system. It's free. All you have to do is sign in with, you're going to have to confirm yourself either with a, an email, a phone number, or a social media account. I personally like the social media account, Twitter, because with Twitter you can use hashtags and with these cells, you can actually go in and say, my Starkville area weather. A lot of times, you'll be sitting in your office. If you're like me, you have no windows. That's okay. I don't have bars on the door either, so that's always a good thing. But you don't know what the weather's like outside. You probably have a Twitter account where you might get something from the National Weather Service or some weather facility that you're following. But how many, how many tweets come through your, your Twitter account every hour? If you're like mine, it's at least one, but probably more like 50 to 100 because of the people you're following that are giving information. So you may or may not see that. With Selly, if you get a text message, what do you do? If your phone buzzes right now, what would you do? You might, you might kind of do it like this so I wouldn't see it, but you'd answer it because it's a text message. This is the same thing. The good thing about this is when you tie it in with Google, I mean with Twitter, you see these Twitter accounts right here. This would be the WCBI Weather Twitter, and I can have it look for severe thunderstorm warning. So anytime they tweet something out that says severe thunderstorm warning is the hashtag, it's automatically going to be picked up by this cell and it's going to text message me. So you may be sitting outside and it may be beautiful sunny weather and you have no idea that, that you're fixing to be taken up by a tornado and whisked off to Oz, except that your phone buzzes. 
to show you how it works, let's go to my presentation cell. Now, if you were trying to keep up with my presentations, you want to know what I'm going to do something, you could simply go in and on your cell phone text at presentations to 23559. And if anybody wants to do that right now on their cell phone, feel free to. You can take it off as soon as you get done. What it will do is you will show up either as a new user that's anonymous or if you put your user a username in, you can do that. I can send a message out. And it sends out. Anybody that is following me gets that text message. Now, the good thing about this, most people are going to use it as an alert system. You send it to them, they can't communicate back to you. So if you say, we're going to have class an extra hour today, be sure to be there, they can't say, oh, I don't want to. They can think it, but all they got is that message going out to them. Another thing you can do with this is you can use it to send polls. Okay, now as I send that poll out, anybody who has signed up for this can respond right here and I will start getting anonymous numbers on what they want to do. If you're trying to figure out when's the best time for you to have an extra study session for your class, you can send this out and let them poll. Somebody just dinged. I hope that was somebody who had signed up for this so they could see how it works. Joseph, you're not going to help me out here. Okay, get your phone out. Now, I'll make this man work. He's just new on the job, so uh, you want to, when you text, do at presentations, and then the number you're dialing is 23559. As you can see, nobody's done anything yet. Oh, well. Such a, such a lively crew this morning. I tell you what. Uh, the receptors, again, this is very simple to use. You can use an RSS feed, or you can use a Twitter feed. The good thing about this, if you're going to use a Twitter feed to keep you from having to enter information in, it's got to have a specific Twitter account name and a specific hashtag. So if I did something from my Craig Jackson Twitter account, and I'm going to try to post anything that I, that I send out, if it's about the Creating Futures Conference, it's got to come from my Craig Jackson Twitter account, and the hashtag would have to be CFTTC2013. Otherwise, nothing comes through. So it's a little bit of a security measure. You can also use this as a chat mechanism, either curated or non-curated. I don't recommend doing that simply because I don't want my phone buzzing all the time. I don't know if, you know, I, you know if, if, when people just start, you know, here's a message, here's a message. You know what I do? After the third message, I pick up the phone and say, talk to me. Okay, I don't need this. And I'm sure y'all don't either. And of course, your students don't want it in the class like that either. Anyway, we've had some, we've had some people. Two said, that's the wrong one, that's lunch. We've got one that thinks I'm nuts. Thank you, Joseph. I appreciate that. But that's, and, and you see, he's exactly right. I don't know who it is. It's anonymous. I can go down here and look and see, well, I don't know who, there's nobody here that's joined recently. So it's somebody from my previous session that's saying, why is this guy texting me? That's okay. But that's, that's what Sally is. You can create as many as you want. 
it is tied to a Twitter account or a social media account. So if you've got a personal Twitter account, a professional Twitter account, a school Twitter account, you can have three different Selly accounts. And then under these accounts, you can have multiple cells. So if you wanted to have something for uh, weather alerts, if you wanted to have something for special events, if you wanted to have something for, uh, God forbid, you had a lockdown on campus or something, you can have different ones that people can sign up for. It does have a, and I will do this first, it does have an apple and it has an Android app. And what you can do is simply go through and look at the different cells that you've got a, you're a member of. Here's the Mississippi Department of Transportation. And it will show me all of the tweets that the Department of Transportation has put out regarding highway safety. When Isaac hit in the fall, roads were underwater, there were limbs across the roads. This would let you know if you were going through there, through a certain area, what roads were open, what roads were closed. Because it's an official Twitter account, you don't have to worry about Wayne saying, well, I think there's a tree down around my house, and Lynn saying, well, yeah, there's one out here that's down too. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a limb, or maybe they thought they saw a limb, or maybe somebody came and got it already. But by having it as the official, as the official account, I don't have to worry about wondering, is this real or not? When hurricanes come through, everybody is wondering what's going on. If you follow a Twitter feed, it's zipping through there. We've got one set up that will allow them to follow Mississippi Emergency Management, the Governor's Office, and the National Weather Bureau. So if any one of them puts out any kind of special statement that has a specific hashtag, that will show up here as well. Again, you can go in, you can schedule messages and polls from your device. If I wanted to schedule, I could do that, or I could actually go in and do a poll. And whatever, whoever's following this would get that information. All of the phone numbers are 23559. It does not matter what, uh, what account you've got it under, it's always going to be something at 23559. Your names The names that you're going to name yourselves, they do have some naming conventions and restrictions that you need to follow. Uh, the settings, real simple to do. Anyone can join or you can restrict it. If you restrict it, you can make them add a username, do a short bio or a password. The mode, curated chat, open chat, or alert only. I always like the alert only because I don't like people back talking. How many of you like to get back talk from stuff? Okay. You can describe your cell, put your location, put a logo and a website to go to. And then the key thing down here, do you want your cell public to the world or do you want it private? I like to have it public. Uh, you know, working for a state agency, you want that transparency. You want anybody to be able to go in and see that you're not putting any messages up that you shouldn't be. And as you can see, when you click public to the world, it says this means anyone can see this cell and read the messages. I like that. So it's a free application. Um, I've used it now for a little over a year. Uh, I have actually had the opportunity to uh, meet and talk to one of the co-founders of the company. We talk about once a month. Um, because we're in education, he has assured me if there are ever any things that we need to have implemented in that, that he would be glad to work with us on that. Currently, it is a free application. They are talking about offering a premium package that will do uh, multimedia texts, where you can send videos or voice or things like that. But the good thing is you can sit here and send that text message out, the alert out, without having to wait for your school to do it. 
Any questions or thoughts on Sally? Ooh, the big hum. That was I annotate. What was that? I annotate. I annotate, okay. And there if, is a, a paid version and a, and a free version. Okay, if you'll give me that after the session, I'll, I'll take a look, I'd love to look at that. And if any of you have got things you'd like to share, I'm, I am by no means the great wizard of Oz, wait a minute. I am by no means the great wizard of Oz behind the curtain. So if, if you've got some, some thoughts on some tools, you know, well, I'm open to that. Any other questions on Selly? Let's see if anybody actually joined Joseph besides. Well, now four of them think I'm nuts. So for the four of you who didn't join here, oh yeah, we do have some new users here. You know, thank you for joining. To opt out, all you have to do is uh, go to the page that when you, when you signed up, it gives you all the commands on how to get out and how to turn things off. So you don't, you'll notice a lot of these people have turned off the text right now. They really don't want to hear about that 50 inch TV, they're not eligible to win anymore. Okay. The next item is Tweetcaster. Now I know two people in here tweet. Actually I know three people in here that tweet. And one has not tweeted in a while, and two tweeted yesterday. One from Cahoma, and one all the way from San Diego, California. Now, we're not going to say who that person is because they might be sitting on the back row on the right-hand side in the middle of the system with the apple sticking up, but that's okay. When you're tweeting, you can go to Twitter, of course, and that's fine. But there's an application called Tweetcaster which allows you to tweet from multiple accounts at the same time. This can be multiple Twitter accounts, this can be multiple Twitter accounts and a Facebook account, or a LinkedIn account, or anything. It also has a web interface that you can use to go through and send your text from. As you can see right here, here's my Craig Jackson account. You can see all of the things I am tweeting out and all the things that are coming in. Here is a, here's one that we sent out today, Brandon Sesser presenting. I've got a picture you're able to go through and look at. So there's the picture. When you go in to your tablet, I know you all know my passcode now, but you know, how many of you are actually going to be going back to Starkville with me and have an opportunity to get this from me? I don't think many. Here's your Tweetcaster on the iPad. You can see you've got multiple accounts up here that you can go from. You have the ability to look at your mentions, who is mentioning you. And see, there's Andrea Flagiallo. And she actually, how many of you had a chance to see Andrea's presentation yesterday? Yeah? Good, wasn't it? We're, we're lucky to have somebody. Andrea came all the way from Pepperdine University to present this conference. So, you know, it lets you know how important technology is all over the world. You can go in and look at your messages. If you've got any messages, oh, there we go again. Who loves the wireless here? Yeah, me too. Uh, but again, you can go through, choose your different accounts, need to add different accounts right there. See, if I was the great Wizard of Oz, this thing still wouldn't be spinning. And if I wasn't in a big group and this was uh, not the university's property, if it was like this, I'd that's, that's a dead phone, by the way. <laughs> Y'all think, the guy's gone nuts. He's throwing cell phones. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's not going to work. The wireless is down again. But that is the Tweetcaster. It does have a premium version that will allow you to do a few other things and take away some of the advertisement that it has 
on the free version. But again, how many of you watch uh, regular television? TNT, TBS. Do y'all still recognize the, the commercials that they run across the bottom of the screen? Or do you just ignore them by now? You know, now showing is this. Coming up next is that. The only time I see it was I'm half asleep. I'm like, what was that? So you get past the commercials and they're not that obtrusive when they pop up down there. Um, this works desktop for Windows, Mac, works on the iPad, works on the Android tablets and phones. And I use this on the phones because TweetDeck underwent some involuntary conversions a few years ago and it doesn't really work as well on the, the phones anymore, I mean on the tablets and phones as it used to. So that's if you're doing a lot of, of social media stuff. You're able to attach pictures, videos, anything you need to. Does anybody use Tweetcaster? Can anybody say Tweetcaster? No, okay. It's a lively crowd. I know y'all sitting there saying, come on, I am ready to go and get that TV. Okay, let's move on then. Yes, sir. If, if I'm on there, you know, at it, and I want to find you, it says find you. Okay. So I, I can put in, I have to have your... You have to have my username. And that would be Craig Jackson, all one word. And I'm going to tell you what, the, the Selly is a really cool thing. Uh, I've actually got, uh, using using Twitter as my as my driving force I can tweet something out with a hashtag have it pop up on my on my blog site because I'm looking for that I can have it go over to Selly and if I attach a link to it then it shows up in my daily newspaper that I publish online all from one thing and if I want to go in and if we've got a bad storm coming or something I'll go out and tweet out you know, if you need up-to-date weather, go to this site and get it, and they can go and choose what they want. They can get in and out with no problem. If, you ha if, you, if, you, if you're looking for a text messaging system, and there, there are a couple of others that you can use, but they are strictly for education. This one is not strictly for education. So if you're looking for some sort of an organization, uh, you know, Creating Futures Through Technology may try to go with something like this for next year. But you don't have to come with an EDU email address to get it. And that's, that's you know, the, the others are good, but they're also limited in what they can do. You can pre-schedule text messages to go out in Selly, just as you can pre-schedule tweets to go out in TweetDeck or in TweetCaster. How many of you knew that you could pre-schedule a tweet. Just because I was in your session yesterday. You, <laughs> you see, what is it about the right-hand side over here that's always, you know, they're, they're involved. The guys on the left-hand side, they're, they're sleeping. I don't understand this. Maybe I'll come back and sit with y'all and see if it's the effect or, you know, maybe the wind's blowing wrong over there. But yeah, absorbing. you're absorbing? Ooh, I like that. Had a lady up here yesterday absorb like half the pitcher of water. She spilled it on herself. But, uh, I don't think she was quite absorbing like you were. But yeah, that's the, the thing with Sally is there, there's a lot of potential there to do things. You can do multiple cells. I've got a cell that I do for my baseball friends that come from out of town to ball games. Uh, last, was it last Friday, two weeks ago, Friday night, we had a rain delay in Starkville. Well, first of all, because the first game got started late and ended late, we didn't know what time first pitch would be. So they finally announced it, and we were able to text out to people driving in from Huntsville, Alabama, and a couple other locations, and they could just pick up their phone and look at that instead of trying to find their Twitter feed. Then when they came up and said, well, we've got this problem now, we were able to tweet that, and again, instead of them driving down in the dark, trying to read a Twitter feed. 
if you just get that text message. If you're like me, I've got one of those phones that says, hey, idiot, you have a phone message. No, it just says, droid, and then starts reading the message. So for those of you with a sense of humor, watch those words. You never know what's going to be posted. That's a good question. Thank you. Dropbox. How many of you are familiar with Dropbox? Is this something we need to refresh ourselves with? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Right. I have seen that, and I and and I will tell you this. I subscribe to several different uh, websites that send out information about new and evolving technology. I am aware of that. I have not looked into it at this point. Um. Do what? Cloud on. No, cloud, cloud on. Cloud on is a different. Cloud on is actually, it was an uh, an Apple only uh, application until this year. They've made it where it's it's Android as well, but it was the first one that actually gave you a Windows interface, uh, not Windows interface, but Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and Excel. You know, the big thing about Excel, you've got to have those function keys at the top of the page. If you don't, you might as well just be, you know, put blindfold on and don't know where you are. CloudOn gives you that ability. It actually has an interface that has the function keys across the top of the screen. And it saves the documents to your Dropbox that you can get it. Did you find something? A jokey. A jokey? Hajoki. Hajoki. H-O-J-O-K-I. H-O-J-O-K-I. That is the app for Android that will let you access all of your cloud devices, your cloud drives. Well, this is the combined service, I think, is the Dropbox, Evernote, Google Apps, you can use to combine. Okay, so it's, okay. So it's not actually going to give you one spot to access all of your cloud storage. Okay. Well, since somebody brought up an Android phone, how many of you have ever found yourself in a position like this conference where the wireless is not exactly going to be there for you all the time? How many of you turned down the opportunity to purchase the tethering plan for your cell phone because it was going to cost you 20 bucks a month? If you have an Android device, there's an application out there, an app called FoxFi, F-O-X-F-I. They've got a free version and a premium version. The premium is about $7. The difference in the two, the free version gives you 20 minutes of usage and then you have to restart your hotspot. The premium version gives you unlimited, you don't have to keep rebooting it. The good thing about this is you are able to create and turn your phone or tablet into a hotspot and you don't have to pay the tethering fee. It is going to work off of your data plan. So if you've got a two gig data plan, you've got up to two gigs that you can share out to however many people. If you're driving down the road in the car with your family and you've got to work on a report, you just simply turn that hotspot on you log into your, your computer there, the full-blown laptop, and you're able to work with it, just like you could on the device, except you've got the full, the full pattern. I think Fox 5 costs $7. It's available at the Google Play Store. And that's what I wound up doing last night, was turned on that hotspot and worked off of the iPad and my notebook and a couple other devices and it was just as quick as, as if it was anything else. Also, if you are a C Spire customer, you probably have unlimited data. If you have unlimited data, there you go. If you, especially if you've got 4G, because that's some really quick stuff. 
But Dropbox, again, you can, you can continue to add, uh, you can get up to, I think, uh, five gigs if you get people to uh, sign up because of you and if you give them some names and numbers and if you, you know, stand up and send them a picture of you doing this, you know, they'll, they'll give you the additional space on there. Forget all of your students to, to do it. Yeah. Okay. All of you yeah. And it's, it's a good thing. Another thing you can use Dropbox for, you may not be, be aware of or you may not be using it as, if you have a blog site or a website, you can use the public directory and put your files over there so you don't eat up bandwidth and space on your host provider. I know I've got a wordpress.com site. I have three gigs of storage. I take pictures. Pictures take up a lot of space. And so I can just put it on a Dropbox account. And of course, I've got one or two different email addresses, 10 maybe. So I've got you know, plenty of space to farm these things out to. And again, by the only, the only problem I have with it is the way it syncs up to your different desktops and everything. If you've got multiple accounts, you have to have different folders and it, it gets kind of crazy. But it's a very good application. It does have uh, an, 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 an iPad, an iPhone app, as well as one for Android. Cloud on. Now this is what we were talking about a few minutes ago. This is the app that you can actually go in and download onto the website is cloud on c l o u d o n cloud on dot com as you can see apple or google and what it does Cloud on. <sighs> okay, pretend y'all don't see this thing right here that says the internet connection is not working. Okay, have you ever had those days? This is it, okay? But what it does basically is you're going to have a keyboard with your function keys across the top. And you can access it and work it just like a, a word processor. The only thing that, that will be a drawback is the fact that the keyboard is not that big and you're gonna have to, especially if you're on a smartphone. Um, what time is this supposed to get over? Do I know? 11 something? Well, okay. Google Drive is very similar to Dropbox, is very similar to Box.net. Box.net you can get, uh, they had a special going last year, you could get 50 gigs of storage capacity for life with them. And again, like I said, I had about 10 different email addresses and aliases and I think I own Box.net now pretty much. Google Drive is the same thing, if you use Google Docs, this is a good way to, to put everything together. And again, I don't know what y'all think about putting all your eggs in one basket. You know, I don't think Google's going away anytime soon. Then again, the CEO of Groupon probably didn't think he was going away anytime soon last week. And he did. So they can shut things down in a heartbeat. And Twinkies. You know, I don't know how many of y'all followed the Twinkie fiasco, but being a junk food junkie, it hurt my feelings when they said, that's it. So you never know when they're gonna go away. But Google Drive does the same thing. It syncs your documents. You have an app for the iPhone, the iPad, and your desktop.
There's my Google Drive folder. You just drag and drop content into it, just like you would on any folder on your Mac or on your PC. It then is going to sync it up with the cloud. The problem with that is if you're busy uploading things at work and you've got your machine on at home, it's going to be busy syncing it up there as well. Or if somebody's syncing stuff up at home, you're going to have that problem. I like to use it again for my pictures when I have to have access to send stuff to different uh, sporting organizations and, and websites and all. It's easier for me to put some pictures up on Google Docs and pull it down and do whatever I want to with it. Also because I use Google Picasa as one of my photo repositories, I can just move things over from that too. So it's, it's just the same as, as Dropbox. Dropbox has the, the computer interface where you can just drag and drop things over and then it syncs it up to the cloud. So it's an interesting thing to do. Now, as we're running a little bit low on time, Skype, need I say any more? They've got apps for Android, they've got apps for iPads. Text Plus, this is another application. They've got iPad, Android, Apple PC. It gives you a free phone number that you can send text messages from. You can actually dial people up and talk to them on the phone for free. It is very similar to um, Google Voice. You can download it. You can get the app. Anything I want to do, if I wanted to go here and send myself a message, I can go in and I'm going to send myself an original message. Okay, never mind. I'm not because you have to have internet connection. And it's just, okay. Let's pretend we've got internet connection. What you do is you put in you put in the phone number at the top. You put in the phone number at the top. There it is. Phone number, then you put your text message in right there and you send it. You can send a picture. Okay, you can turn it around and get it from the other side. There's me. You can call somebody. But again, you've got to have the network. This is good if you're in your car. It's also good because, as Google Voice is, you don't have to give anybody your personal cell phone number or your personal desk number or home phone number, but you're able to get these things at home or wherever you are. Okay? Let's go to one that I know is working because I know the network is working on this. Apps Bar. How many of you would like to create an app for your school, your class, uh, an organization or something that is Android capable and uh, Apple compatible via HTML5? Apps Bar is where you create these. As you can see on this one, here's the interface for my app. If I'm looking for my staff people, I can have the pictures and the names. If I am trying to, who do you call? I can break it down by different groups. And if you're on a smartphone, you can actually push the button and it will dial it for you. 
You can put links to websites. You can do help information. You can put videos. You can ask questions and you can put a calendar on there where somebody can go in and click on this and actually on the app they'll be able to add it to their calendar. How easy is it to do this? It's very easy. You've got a menu driven that comes up and you let you create a new page. They've got a very a variety of templates that you can choose from, events, lists, contacts, uh, pictures, web pages. If I want to link to a web page, I simply click next. Um, I choose an icon or I can upload an icon from my computer. Once I do that, somebody give me a web address to their school. Okay, so now I update that and immediately there is the Cahoma website. And as you, if you're on a smartphone, you rotate it around, it's there. If you're on a tablet, it's all right there. It's that easy. Now, I know you're saying, okay, Craig, how much is it going to cost me? Well, you know, since nobody offered to buy me a car and get one free and things like that, I'll give it to you for free. It is absolutely free. The company that, is, that has developed this retains the rights to possibly, possibly put advertising across the bottom of it if they need to on their free version. But most people do. But they don't right now. They're very responsive. Again, I have talked to a couple of their, their top CEOs and, and, and management team. You know, please contact us, call us, do whatever. We've got, I've got apps out right now um, that can do just about anything. If you want to do something about weather, if you want to do something about Common Core, if you want to do something about uh, your community college, you know, housing, uh, the, the cafeteria, athletics, academics, counseling, whatever, you just build that page up and put it up there. Right now it is a native Android app. It is HTML5 for Apple, but they're working on the Apple. Anybody who knows about the iTunes store knows how picky they are with developers. They're very, very, very picky. And that's what they're trying to work out right now is to make sure that the apps meet the standards that Apple needs. Okay? Another one for you Twitterers out there. Twitonomy. How many times has your boss said, you know, I see you in there tweeting all the time, but is it really reaching anybody? Are, are you getting any good out of this? What you do with Twitonomy is you go in and sign in with your Twitter account. Kind of figured that one was coming, right? But you sign in with your Twitter account, and then what it's going to do is it's going to analyze your information. On your profile, it's going to come in and tell you how many times, how many tweets you have, which is how many per day, how many user mentions, how many replies, retweets, hashtags, how many things you have retweeted. It will come in and give you the ability to look at when you're tweeting, who are the ones you've retweeted the most, who are the users you've replied to the most, who are the users you've mentioned the most, and then the hashtags you've used. What's really cool with this is if I want to go in and look at my mentions and retweets, this is where it's really, really good. This will tell you what part of the country or the world you are being retweeted from. And again, here in Mississippi, this gives you an opportunity to become a global expert because people are retweeting your information. Is it not popping up again? Come on. 
Also, you see over here the potential reach. I've got 120 people following me, 130 people following me. If I hit them all at the right time with the right information on the right day, I have the potential to reach 404,000 Twitter followers based off of 100 people. It also tells me who my most influential. There's Blackboard, uh, Stacy Hank Incorporated, 12 Mass, all these things right here. These are the people that I can get out to. It shows me who has retweeted something. Two people retweeted this and it got out to 7,000 people by two people retweeting one comment. Okay? I know, I'm just stretching and letting them know they've got 10 minutes left too. So you can wake up now. Please put your chair backs and tray tables in the upright position. What you can also do then is you come over to your visualize your mentions. And what this is going to do is it's going to start dropping how many times I've been mentioned and how many different locations. Okay, Virginia and California. These are a couple of our presenters that were here yesterday and are in the room with us today. Here is JS Mississippi. Anybody here from JS? Can anybody spell JS? Somebody, somebody cheated. But as you can see, it's dropping these things all around. You start seeing when you go back in just a minute and look at who these users are, these might be some of your influential users. So when you send out a tweet, instead of just saying, here's a link to some data about whatever, okay? What I might do is tweet out, hey, Blackboard world or whatever. Here's a link that shows some interesting information about online learning. They retweet that, you have just reached 10,000 people. So you can reach critical mass like that. As you can see, it's still dropping, but then it's gonna, it's gonna come in, actually when it gets done, it's going to show you, you've got 15 people here, you've got 93 here, you've got this here. You can start going into the areas and looking. This is a great marketing tool because now, I mean, we can sit here and watch this all day. It's like watching war games or something, you know, and they're bombing the US. But see, look, look here, somebody in the UK has retweeted me. Somebody in the United Kingdom has retweeted somebody in Starkville, Mississippi because there's content out there that they found that was vital or that was worth passing on. So at your community colleges, whatever, you can market yourselves. You know, Texas, Arizona, they may be, because the oil industry is going bad, they may want to get into some other kind of drilling project. If you offer a drilling class at your school or something for ex-drillers, you might say, hey, so-and-so, did you know that Meridian Community College has classes open now for blah, blah, blah? Okay? So you put that out. I didn't realize this thing was going to go on all day. There we go. As you can see, Australia, I've got six people in the United Kingdom, Finland, I've got 13 people on the West Coast. I've got 59 in the central United States, so I can go right there. And now I can see I've got 17 in Arkansas, five in Oklahoma, two in Illinois. And if I go here, I've got somebody in Springfield and somebody in St. Louis. If I click on St. Louis, this tells me who mentioned me. So then I can go in and follow them or do whatever I need. I can also go in and run a an analysis on their viewers and their users and what their reach is and again begin to see do I really 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 need to do that okay um, GCF learn free if you're trying to teach some different things or you're trying to learn different things this place has some free online courses they also have this on the Android I'm sorry not on the Android yet on the on the iPhone the iPad if you're looking to learn about social media, you can simply go to this. Here's Facebook 101. Click on that, and it's going to take me through lessons. 
I've got extras here, some articles you can read, here's some videos you can watch, understanding privacy and different things. You can also go through and take an online test with this. If you have an online class for students learning how to do social media, you can actually embed this, well you can't embed it, you can link to it in your course in Canvas and use that as content instead of having to recreate it all over again. Okay, they've got a lot of stuff. Um, I know we got like 75 bazillion, and I can say that because bazillion is not a true. GCF, learn free, all one word, dot O-R-G. If you're trying to learn about Apple, here's stuff about iPad basics, iPhone basics. Joseph, you could probably use that. You could use anything basic, couldn't you? But you can go in, and look at buying it, getting to know it, the features. If you go back and look at the iPad, and again, you're trying to, to teach a class to new users how to do it, here's your information right here. And I can just about bet that they're not using a webcam to do the screen. Now they could be, I don't know. They're not original like I am. You've got stuff on mobile apps that you can go. So this is a great program that you can go in and look at. Great website. Um, that's probably about all you've got time for today. You need to go and get in line because y'all got to win my TV for me. But I appreciate your time. I appreciate your Are there any questions or comments or thoughts before you go? Thank you for your time and your patience. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Be safe traveling back to wherever you're from.